This week on Maker Update, a sand plotter, making masks, motion activated bird calls, cutting the lights, an LED repair kit, wiring DuPont connectors, and a less lazy Susan. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, the show where I update you on Maker things, mostly projects. Uh, how are y'all doing? I am hanging in there. Has your life become mostly shower optional? <laughs> Mine sure has, but today I freshened up just for you. So let's get started with the project of the week. It's crazy how sometimes there's just something in the air that makes the same idea occur to multiple people. Last week, I showed you Cigar Bananas Bike Rider, which wrote out messages with water. This week, let's take a look at Ivan Miranda's Beach Rider, which carves out messages into wet sand. The design has two main parts. The main part is the array of 50 servos, each with a little 3D printed extender attached to it that helps it carve into the sand. The servos all connect up to two Arduino Mega Boards, which drive each servo up or down. The instructions for what to write come from a third Arduino Mega Board, which reads a text file from an attached SD card shield. The second part of the build, which is honestly an accomplishment in itself, are these two tank treads on each side. Each of these is powered by its own geared DC motor, but what's really nuts is that these treads are almost entirely 3D printed. There are a few bearings and rods to fit into them, but otherwise, it's 3D printing all the way. Put it all together and you've got your own beach crawling art machine, and unlike the bike rider, this thing has 50 lines of resolution, so you could just as easily carve out some artwork, or maybe some ASCII art, or a continuous pattern. It's super cool. Now for some more projects. On the I Like To Make Stuff channel, Bob Claggett dabbles in some cosplay with this blue spirit mask from Avatar The Last Airbender. This is a nice pre-Halloween warm-up. He's using EVA foam and really just freehanding the whole thing. I actually find it inspiring to watch Bob wing it like this and make some mistakes and try different approaches. As someone who hasn't done EVA foam projects before, watching Bob improvise and sketch things out as he goes makes me feel like this is something I could attempt without putting too much pressure on myself. On Instructables, Rabbit Creek has a guide on how he created this motion activated, solar powered bird call speaker. He calls it an electric thrush, named after the type of bird whose calls he's loaded into it. The design is this crazy 3D printed horn with this PIR sensor coming down from it. It almost looks like a bell with its clapper hanging to one side. For the electronics, he's using an Adafruit feather with a Music Maker feather wing and a relay module. The Music Maker is loaded up with recordings from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. The idea is that once the motion sensor detects something nearby, it plays through its library of pleasant bird chirps. That said, there's no reason you couldn't modify it to play the Star Wars Imperial March or the sound of an audience applauding as you walk by. It's great, and what's extra cool is that it's a totally self-contained, solar-powered project that you can put anywhere. And then there's Simone Yetch. Chances are you've already seen her video on making this scissor lamp that allows her to cut the lights, but let's take a minute to unpack what it is that makes videos like this so great. Poor Simone can't catch a break. Every element of this project is fighting her. She's trying to jigsaw sheet metal, her welder's burning holes, her lamp base won't stay up, her LED wires weren't connected right. But when she finally pushes through, don't you just feel a little bit of that joy of something finally working out? I don't know if I even like this project, but I love the vicarious buzz of that universal maker struggle to finish a project. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to give it a watch. Now for some tips and tools. On Tindy, Blinken Labs has this neat LED strip repair kit. But it's cooler than that. It's more like a way to give the ends of your LED strip a more rugged connection. Instead of soldering wires directly to the strip, you solder the strip to this board and then you have these bigger pads that you can connect your wires to. I think it's a cool idea and a 10 pack runs just $8. On Tested, Adam Savage will convince you that there's a vastly superior alternative to a Lazy Susan. This is the Rockler Heavy Duty Bearing. It's a more durable machined aluminum bearing that comes in different sizes. It's apparently the go-to solution for attaching the head to your R2-D2. They're considerably more expensive than a typical Lazy Susan, but if you need something that can support more weight, move quietly, or stand up to more abuse, this is a good upgrade to know about. On the DIY Machines channel, there's a great explanation on how to use a crimper to create your own custom DuPont cables. This is one of those tools I finally came around to this year as a way to tidy up my own wiring instead of chaining together pre-wired connections. 
The trickiest part is really building a confidence that you're crimping the connection correctly. This video shows that process up close. Tom's Hardware has a new roundup of the best expansion hats for Raspberry Pi. There's a few Adafruit hats and the Google AIY voice hat, but the big contender here is Pi Maroni, who have four hats here on a list of 10. Give it a look. By way of Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, I found this video by Project Farm comparing different step drill bits from $7 all the way up to $45. If you're looking to buy or replace a step bit, it's worth a watch, but the main takeaway is that you really do get what you pay for on these. For an easy to recommend tool that's a bargain, check out my Cool Tools video on this Makita magnetic bit holder. I've used this on a near daily basis for the past two years and it still works great. It holds your screws to the end of your drill, it looks good, and it's only five bucks. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, let's talk a little bit more about Pi Maroni. Not only do they make great and awesome looking expansion boards for the Raspberry Pi, but they also make kits and expansion boards for the Adafruit Feather and BBC Microbit. Their name is a mashup of Pirate Monkey Robot Ninja, and even though they're based in the UK, you can find their products on DigiKey with same day shipping in the US. You can find the link to that down in the description. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know your prediction for what kind of writing contraption we're going to see next week. Uh, you can get on the email list so that you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon, and a special thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible and for stocking all the cool stuff. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.